I moved to Arizona after a completely different career in July of 1998. Uh -huh. And I came down here to visit and fell in love with the area. And I knew the family that owned this ranch. And while I was visiting, Joan invited me to stay in the bunkhouse while I looked for a job. So I stayed in the bunkhouse for six months and I've never left. That was 24 years ago. I'm riding, mm -hmm. horseback, checking fence, um, birthing calves. Um, there's no little bit of ranching. It's all or it's nothing. So you sort of just jump in with both feet. I worked alongside Bud for a lot of years and somewhere in there we transitioned. He would call me his manager. Mm -hmm. um, and in 2012, Bud passed away. And in 2019, I was able to purchase the ranch okay. from the family, which um, I'm very grateful. And um, it's just very, to continue this ranch and, and Bud's love of ranching. And I kept the name Single Star Ranch, which Bud had named um, kind of as an honor to him and to their family, who has always treated me as one of their own and one of their family. Yeah, I grew up on a ranch in Sonoida. That's okay. where I was. was uh, that's where I grew up, and then I went to went to school and, and so forth, and went back to the ranch. And then my dad died in '73, and everything kind of turned upside down. I figured I was going to be on the ranch the rest of my life. That's the way I look at it. So then I started doing construction work, and that's kind of what brought me down here. Is I, a friend of mine, Harry Chambers, which has some land down there, wanted me to build him a dirt tank or rebuild his dirt tank, and that's what I was doing: is construction work. So I came down here to rebuild that dirt tank, and it was a longer process than I thought. And, Teresa came by and talked back and forth, and then we got to be close friends, and you know, the rest is history from that standpoint. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is the tremendous amount of just caring and love of horses and animals for, in general, for that matter. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not just raising cattle, we're raising beef. We're very proud of um, the grass-fed, fodder-finished animals that we have. Um, that we butcher, we can provide for people's tables and meals and feed their, nurse their family. Um, that's um, the crux of our cattle business and, and that's where it ends up. So our cattle are fairly pampered. They're um, at the moment have pretty lush green grass and um, we do get eyes on everybody every day so that we know they're well, we know that the illegals haven't come through and cut the fence, that our breeding program hasn't, you know, mixed up with gates opened and, and um, things down. We check the waters every day. So it's been going on my forever. So I've been here since 98 and um, 98 to 2004 or something. There we were just run over by illegals. When I moved here, the border fence was a seven strand barbed wire and most of the barbed wires were laying on the ground. So you would just step over and you're in Mexico. Yeah. Um, so we've seen the development of the towers. Mm -hmm. um, we do have one on the property and um, that reduced our flow. At the time, we, they estimated, a low estimate was about a thousand illegals uh, a week coming through this ranch, uh, just this little ranch. Mm -hmm. And when they put up the, the Power that reduced it by 30%. So now we still have 700. Yes. And then the um, wall went out and that reduced it again. Mm -hmm. um, so now 70%. Yes. And so we still have 30% coming through. And then there was a, a, a time, there were several years in there after the wall where we weren't having the droves of traffic, but we were having um, most of the drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, now we're in that cycle again where we have droves of people coming across and it's a mixture and what's we're not seeing on this particular ranch we're not seeing a lot of drugs or a lot of weapons we're seeing mostly people i've noticed that i think is is interesting is that a couple decades ago if you saw someone in camo they were the drug runners and you know you want to you know duck and hide away um now Everybody coming across. That's part of the uniform to cross the border. Is that you're you're in your camo shirt and pants. You've got your carpet booties and your gloves and your knee pads and you're crawling across. Yeah. Um, but if they leave our gates open and our fences down, then our breeding program goes, yeah. you know, out the window. And when well, they leave their toilet paper and their tortillas and their plastic wrappers and their backpacks, and backpacks. yeah, all yeah. those things, if they're ingested by yeah. any of the livestock, yeah. 
that can be life threatening. And so every day is different um, between the rescue and the cattle operation. There is no downtime. Um, we are saying our motto is siempre algo. Um, hey, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so the, fir the first thing to know about a typical day is that there is nothing typical about ranch no. life. Right. 